Check, check. <clears throat> Let's see here. Refresh, update. Hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, what's going on? So I already, I'm live in the event. So you're going to be recording it from your end, or how does that work? Yeah, as soon as you're done, I can download the replay. It like, takes an hour to process, but I can download the replay. Okay, and the, how are we doing on the other ones? Have those been posted to YouTube yet, or no? Actually, they have not, so I can work on getting those posted. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Uh, are you going to be online right now to see if you can uh, hear yeah, me? I'm going to go in, make sure you guys are okay for the first 10 minutes. And then hop on. All right, yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, what else? What else? Cool. Uh, do the registrants get in on their email? They get the link to join. Is that right? Right. Correct. Okay. Does it get sent like an hour before by any chance, or no? Uh, let me see what settings I have it on. <clears throat> All right, so they get a reminder 24 hours before and then 15 minutes before. And then they'll get the replay link in three hours after that. Huh? Oh, okay, sorry, what was that? You get it before every uh, before when, the link? Okay, so, so they get the link immediately 24 hours before and then 15 minutes before. And then three hours later, they're going to get the link to the replay. Okay, sounds good. Looks like... Uh... Gary might have joined already right now. All right, cool. All right, let me help out right now. All right, sounds good. Okay, bye. Hey, Gary, you hear me? 
I do. Let me uh, just uh, pull up my uh, camera. Okay, you see me? Yep. Okay. Uh, let me open up my PowerPoint or my. Perfect. Okay. Share my screen. Perfect. Uh, wait a second. Okay. Oh, I don't want to share that. Let me open this again. Take a message here. There you go. Okay, you see it now? Yeah, but I see the the Yeah, I get it. From the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Right there's good. Yep. Okay, so you still see me. Yeah, I still see you, and I'm pretty sure the audience might be able to see you. Shining you there. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So I'm not going to fuss right now because, again, I, I don't see you, but that's fine. Okay. Right. But I'm going to leave it like this because I'm ready to roll when you tell me, you know, introduce me and go from there. How, do we have anybody in the room yet? Uh, No, just Shannon. Just okay. Shannon, yeah. Just well, I'm just sitting here. Let me know when you are ready to roll, and I will roll. So take your time and wait for people to come in. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll give them a few minutes here. That's fine. All righty. Attendees. Cool, cool. So we'll leave. So how you been, Gary? Everything good? Thank God everybody's well, you know? That's the most important thing, obviously. <clears throat> Definitely, yes. And your family? Everybody good with your family? Yeah, yeah. Everything's great. We are doing A-OK. -okay. All right, good. Um, I'm actually in the process of possibly opening a second location pretty soon. Um. I just lost you. All right. Oh, can you hear me there? Check one, two. Hello, hello. Uh, uh, I hear. It. Check one, two, one, two. Okay. No, I was saying um, that uh, we're in the process of possibly opening opening up a second location. Okay. Whereabouts? Uh, South LA area. Okay. Um, you got any tips? I, I know you've owned multiple practices before, have you? Yeah, right. do, you, do you have a uh, location picked out? Are you going in with somebody, or how are you uh, planning to make this work? Uh, right now, uh, we are negotiating a lease agreement, but it looks like it's going to move forward. Okay. So I already have a location in mind. They're going to build out the office, and, um, yeah, go from there pretty much. How much time do you think you're going to be able to spend there? Um, well, I'm in the process of hiring a dispenser trainee. Okay. So, uh, I'll have a trainee out there for sure. Uh, but I'll be back and forth. 
Because I know you tried that once before with uh, in Linwood, right? Uh, yeah, it was. I was there mostly to do hearing tests for ENT patient, um, ENT doctor. Sorry, um, two right, days out right. of the week. So I mean, that was pretty good. So I just gotta organize myself and see how I can possibly be either both places or make sure I have this uh, trainee trained very well to handle the office <laughs> and hopefully get her license pretty soon. Yeah. So obviously you're going to take your Medicare, Medi-Cal number and everything else over to that location. So obviously you have to add that location with the, uh, the powers that be right. I think. Yeah. Probably- yeah. I have to yeah. submit a, a branch office. To yeah. Medi-Cal board and yeah. When, I have to do all that. when do you think that will be up and running? Uh, I want to say probably early July. Okay. Wow. That's pretty soon. You need equipment for the place. Well, I just recently bought another audiometer. I just got to order possibly a booth. Okay. Um, I'm going to probably order a booth and, um, maybe I'll use that second audiometer over there or maybe another one. Well, you know, obviously, DeMont, William DeMont or Oticon can probably get you the booth. And if you want to tie it into units like we we could, uh, you know, uh, let me know what you want to do rather than have to come up with money. I might be able to do a co-op for you. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Once it gets pretty close. Um, do you, yeah, I mean, do you, when you get a chance. Yeah, do you deal with audiometrics, Matt Folsom? Uh, no, I haven't bought anything from them. I usually, there's a local, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him. His name is Daniel something. He, he does all the calibrations, and then sometimes he sells audiometers and stuff. Is he, want from him. Does he work on his own, or does he work for a company? He works on his own. Yeah, I don't know who he is, so. I could, but you know, uh, if you're looking for used equipment, also I could get it. So, do me a favor when you're ready to have that discussion, uh, let me know. And and remember, I did want to also set up a Zoom meeting with you to detail you on the new Ruby product. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I know I gotta get get back to you on that. We could probably set up a, a day and time. Yeah, next week or sure. later. Later this week, uh, I have plenty of time to do it. But I'll, uh, yeah, once you once you tell me what equipment you need, I'll roll with it and see what I can do to, you know, get you a co-op on it and get you good prices on it through uh, Oticon's uh, audiometric company. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. And then uh, I'll throw you some dates for a Zoom meeting next week, and you'll let me know what would work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that works. Indeed. So you you had three – was it three practices that you had? At one time I had four offices, and uh, uh, once we got rid of – we really got rid of two. We had them for about four years. Then we just consolidated into the two locations that wound up being the best. And one of the locations, uh, because we had an office in Norwalk and Downey, those are the two offices shut because we had one in Lakewood and Seal Beach. And the Seal yeah. Beach office was the monster office because we were right by Leisure World. Uh, mm-hmm. And we were the only ones in that community at that point. Uh, it got a little busy, but we still got the lion's share of the business. And Lakewood, we were doing a lot of Kaiser people, and that was the time Kaiser wasn't uh, dispensing through Herex. So we got a lot of that business. And Norwalk and Downey was set up for Kaiser as well because uh, we, we had a good relationship with them. And then when Kaiser started dispensing, it those two offices became less important. But we still wound up oh. keeping Lakewood and Seal Beach. Oh, okay. And ultimately, right, wow. ultimately, those are the two offices we sold. 
Okay. Nice. The Sonus, the Sonus in 1997. 97. Wow. You, you, you were a child then. <laughs> yeah, 97. I was five years old. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. Sonus has a ton of locations. Yeah, they have about in LA County. I think they have about thirty, thirty-two. I, I'm, I believe that they're going to shut a few coming out of this uh, pandemic. Okay. Uh, I know they shut a few during the pandemic, and so they were they were pointing people in those offices to other offices of theirs. So mm-hmm. my my understanding is that the larger conglomerates like Herex and Connect. And Sonus and Serendipity, uh, they're going to wind up shutting a few of their locations and consolidating. That would be my belief, uh, probably by the end of the year, unless things turn around dramatically. Oh, uh, why they're not getting the the same traffic they were before? No, business is slow. You know that. And they yeah, have a I mean, lot, they have a slow. lot of staff. Oh yeah, yeah. To have that many employees and stuff, probably yeah, crazy. Indeed, but hopefully everything goes back to normal. But uh, well, we'd like to believe it, but uh, normal, normal is mm-hmm. not. Not I don't see normal being what normal was. Uh, for, for maybe till the end of next year. The end of next year. Wow. Yeah. Goodness gracious! Yeah. I think people. I think people will still come in. I think you'll still be selling hearing aids. In fact, managed care is probably going to, you know, increase its its business dramatically. Yeah, and and, and, and medical because people are not working. So I think those two avenues of the business are going to really, really skyrocket. Where private pay is is going to diminish a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, South LA is definitely a medical area. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, absolutely. That's why I want to get you in touch with Ruby because Ruby is down at the medical prices, and it's even got a rechargeable option at medical prices. Definitely. Looks like we got one more attendee here. Let me see. Let me update my list. No attendees in the room, so I'm, it's not refreshing up. But uh, welcome, welcome. Whoever just joined, uh, we're gonna get started, and let's say let's give it let's give it two more minutes here. Um, let's see. The people that signed up, were they, are they your patients or are they new patients or do you have any clue to that? Uh, these are new, uh, potential patients. It it was kind of a YouTube ad that we ran, uh, an educational ad to, uh, you know, educate some people for about hearing loss and how our hearing works. Gotcha. So we got we got about ten registered. Um, we've done these in the past, like I said before, but um, we weren't getting quality candidates with Facebook. So we'll we'll see how we'll see how this goes. It's going to be good. It's right. good information. Good information that we're going to be sharing definitely, and will be used for different purposes other than the webinar. All right. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so just one more minute. Let's see here. Let's see if this refresh. Let's see. Okay, okay. Slides, ten days shut. Okay, okay. All right. Well, it's uh seven oh seven, so I guess we could start here. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar. My name is Christopher Medina. I am your host, and I am your hearing care professional. 
Today, I got our special guest, Doctor of Audiology, Gary Dorf. Thank you so much for joining us and taking the time. Uh, a little bit about uh, Dr. Gary Dorf here. He is an account manager for Oticon, serving the Western region. He has more than 40 years experience in audiology, hearing aid dispensing, counseling, the hearing impaired, and business development. In addition to owning his own private practice for 20 years, Gary served as the vice president for Hearing Instrument Consultants, Inc. from 1979 to 1997. Uh, he holds a bachelor's of science degree from the city of New York, a master's degree from Brooklyn College, and a doctor of audiology degree from the Arizona School of Health Sciences. So welcome, Gary. Welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I really appreciate you having me. I appreciate the invite. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Hopefully we have uh, people out there that'll ask some questions as we go along because uh, I always like to uh, hear people engage. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm ready to roll when you tell me to, my friend. Awesome, awesome. So this uh, presentation is uh, new concepts in hearing healthcare. Hearing, it's all about the all about the brain. So we're gonna you're gonna teach us a little bit how the brain hears, right, Gary? <laughs> I'm gonna go through that. Talk about a recent study that talks about uh, dementia and cognitive decline uh, due to hearing loss. That a lot of people really don't understand how the link is there. So I'm gonna talk about that and talk about some new concepts and hearing aids and, uh, you know, connectivity. Uh, people want to be connected to their phone, to their TV. So uh, I'm just going to bring everybody up to date on the new concepts, the new products. And uh, certainly I've had a pleasure of working with you, Chris, for many years now. And uh, you're always yeah. very, been very professional, very courteous. And uh, I know you've worked well with your patients throughout the years. So uh, I've noticed that. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you and, and some of your uh, guests. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's get started. All right. Well, uh, as I said in my intro, uh, please don't hesitate to ask questions. As uh, the talk goes along, I probably have about 25, 30 minutes of, of lecture, uh, but uh, I usually like when there are questions. So uh, unfortunately, I do not see you, but Chris does. So if you have a question, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to either call it out, speak to Chris. I know there's a little chat box there that uh, Chris can show you if you want to write down a question. But don't hesitate Definitely. to don't hesitate to interrupt me because I'd rather answer the question as you have it. So uh, Chris, you want to remind him about the chat box, or we're good to go? Yeah. So on the right side, there should be a chat. A chat box area where you can go ahead and type in your questions and uh, I'll go ahead and pause Gary so that we can see if we can uh, answer that for you guys all right okay Perfect. well thanks again Chris and and thanks everybody uh, most importantly I, I hope you are all safe uh, I know this is a, a, a different times for all of us uh, I am starting my 11th week working from home uh, and I have been on the road for about 40 years as an audiologist in my own practice. And so being home 11 straight weeks, uh, it, it's a change. I, I have to say, uh, my wife and I, who have married 38 years, are, are getting along exceedingly well. Uh, that's, so, uh, that's, that's an important component because she's used to me traveling every once in a while. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, let me get started and please ask questions as you go along. So it's important to understand that hearing isn't all about your ears. It's actually more about the brain than it is your ears. The ears are the conduit. That brings a sound to the brain, but the brain ultimately is the one who perceives sound, who recognizes who's speaking, who knows where the sound is coming from. So I want to explain how the brain is connected to the ear and how the ear is connected to good cognitive functioning. So we're gonna move on here and talk a little bit about, okay, why aren't we moving on here? Okay, that's not good. Um, okay. Maybe press the tab, oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go, sorry. Uh, so your hearing is a system, as I started to mention. Your hearing is something that basically 
uh, doesn't work independently. And the ear is a very, very uh, a diverse system in terms of how it performs. Uh, so as we age, unfortunately, uh, your hearing is going to decline. That just is a fact. Uh, just as your vision declines, your hearing's going to decline. Living in the environment we live in today, obviously there's a lot of noise. We all live in noisy environments. That's going to impact. We have young people coming home from the recent conflicts overseas. We're seeing people in their 30s, even in their late 20s, with hearing loss due to noise exposure that we see usually in people in their 70s and 80s. So it is a complex system, but a system nonetheless that we need to make sure we understand how it works and how we need to function. So your two ears and brain work together. It keeps you safe, keeps you able to locate where sound is coming from, and obviously helps you follow conversations, as you see in this a typical uh, restaurant scene, although it's not a terribly typical scene these days, but hopefully they will soon be. So how we hear is pretty pretty simple, and I'm just gonna run you through this animation. Uh, so what happens, sound comes into the ear, and basically the sound through the ear canal hits the ear drum, and the ear drum vibrates and then hits these three little bones and sends fluid through the cochlea, which sends information to the brain. So what happens is now your brain is turning sound into meaning, okay? Before that, the ear is just the conduit sending sound to the parts of the brain that basically make that work. So how your brain makes sense of sound, number one, orient. The brain is constantly using both ears to orient itself and knows what's happening in the environment. People always ask, why do I need two hearing aids? Well, if your ears are both impaired, two ears help that orientation. Just like if your eyes are impaired, you would not think about wearing a monocle, you wear two lenses. So orient the brain does that after it hears the sound. Recognizes where the sound is coming from and the ability to recognize that in order to make sound, make sense of it. Who spoke, where did the sound come from, what direction? Focus, the brain uses both ears to focus on what's important, especially in noisy sound environments, which can be the most challenging for anybody who's hearing impaired. And lastly, separate, the brain separates sound from competing noise. For those of you that have ever walked into a sports bar, whether it's Super Sunday or the NBA Finals, you start talking really, really, really loud because you have to get your speech above the noise. The brain does that best of all, even though we now have hearing aids that do a terrific job of separating speech from noise. So hearing care is health care, and a lot of people don't understand that. Hearing, hearing well is, is all about sometimes hearing your grandkids or, or hearing your spouse or hearing the TV. But ultimately, hearing care is health care. I'm going to walk you through this bit of an animation also just to explain what that means. So basically, hearing care is health care. Taking care of your hearing is caring for your overall health. So it's important to understand the linkage there. And basically what happens is that untreated hearing loss will affect you in many, many ways. Your lack of conversation, your mental tiredness, your social isolation your depression, heart disease has increased, dementia, cognitive issues, all of these things are related to hearing loss. Did you know that hearing loss is the second most common health issue in the world? And the biggest challenge for people is hearing in a noisy environment. The background noise usually masks out what speech is available. And people with hearing loss struggle for that. And not only that, the mental energy to follow conversations become very, very taxing. And it leaves less energy for other brain functions like remembering things or missing words or missing part of the conversation. In the long run, people start to withdraw from social activities. They do not enjoy the activities and therefore they start to withdraw. Oticon is the company that I work for. 
Oticon is a Danish company. They've been in business, believe it or not, 114 years. Oticon wow. was founded by a gentleman whose wife was hearing impaired, and he traveled Europe, throughout Europe, 114 years ago, trying to find solutions. And today, Oticon is one of the largest hearing healthcare company in the world. I have worked for them now and consulted for them for 10 years. So, as I mentioned before, hearing loss is the second most debilitating ailment that we have. It is the third largest public health issue in America. 40 million Americans are affected. Lifestyle and certain conditions can affect your hearing too. As I mentioned before, you work in a noisy environment. You're probably going to have a, a greater hearing loss. You're a rock musician. I know plenty of rock musicians, a child of the 60s am I. Uh, I know plenty of rock musicians whose hearing loss, in fact, uh, they can't even play mm. music any longer because they blew their ears out from all the music and all the amplifiers. Uh, so I see a lot of baby boomers and a lot of former hippies that do have hearing loss. So as I mentioned before, hearing care is health care. And hearing loss has been linked to a variety of serious health issues. And you see a few of them here. Diabetes, social isolation, depression, falling. People who have hearing loss have a higher incidence of falling and breaking hips. Dementia and cognitive decline are the things that are directly related to hearing loss. And for those people that do not take care of their hearing loss via uh, auditory therapy or uh, wearing a hearing aid uh, actually can have a higher degree of depression or a higher degree of uh, cognitive decline. So there were a lot of studies that had come out recently, and I'm just going to talk about this one here. This came out in, I'm sorry, 2017, and the, the commission is the Lancet Commission. The Lancet is a very, very well-respected publication, a medical publication in the United Kingdom. <laughs> and they looked at over 3,000 people in this study. And they were looking at dementia, prevention, intervention, and care. And you might think, well, what does this have to do with hearing loss? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. So what they found out when they reviewed dementia and the cause of it, they found out that 65% of those people with dementia had non-modifiable uh, connection. What non-modifiable connection means is that their DNA or their hereditary factors, things they really could not do much about. 65% of the people in the study that did have dementia 65% of them had things that weren't modifiable, something they could not control. So we all know that DNA plays a big part in anything and everything. It certainly plays a big part in dementia. But what they found out that 35% of the time, things that are modifiable, things that you can actually control in your lifestyle, in your eating habits, 35% of that risk can be diminished if indeed you care for those modifiable options. So what are those modifiable options that we talk about? If you look at this next graph here, you'll see here that the top two lines, 58% unexplained, excuse me, and 7% genetics, that's your 65% percent that are non-modifiable. You can't do much about that. You are who you are, come from where you come from, and 65% of the time, you're not going to be able to control anything that leads to dementia. However, if you look at the next 35% of items, you see hearing loss at 9% is actually the highest modifiable percent of everything you can do to help change the direction of cognitive decline or dementia. And it usually picks up in midlife, which you see here, because hearing loss does come with children. But in this case, they looked at patients who are uh, 64 and older. 
So 9% of the 35% is based upon hearing loss. If you control and manage your hearing loss, you will have less of a possibility of having cognitive decline or dementia. Now make sure you understand what I'm saying here. Wearing a hearing aid is not going to prevent cognitive decline or dementia or Alzheimer's. What I'm saying here to repeat is that if you take care of your hearing loss, you will have a fair chance of at least putting some of that off further into the later years. You see the other things, smoking, depression, physical inactivity, social isolation, diabetes, obesity. Those are things that are modifiable as well. And if you manage those appropriately, as you will at hearing loss, your cognitive decline and dementia and Alzheimer's might be put off for many, many years, or maybe you won't even have it. But it's not a panacea, but it's important to understand what this study pointed to. So unfortunately, when people do have hearing loss, the one thing that we notice most often is the social withdrawal, social isolation. And look, in today's world of COVID-19, a lot of people are isolating. And that's a very, very unfortunate thing. Uh, it's funny, my brother who's 73 uh, told me the other day, and he's uh, by himself, uh, his uh, son lives in Northern California, and he lives down here. His wife passed quite a while ago. He said he feels he's getting older, not because physically he feels he's getting older, but the isolation in his eyes is, is, is really dramatic. But people with hearing loss have it even double difficulty because they wind up isolating. They wind up not going to their friends. They don't go to a party. They don't go to uh, play bridge with their girlfriends. Social isolation is something that we know through many studies can create cognitive decline as well. So we wanna, we wanna put that off. We don't want that to happen. Obviously, spoken language and understanding should be automatic and effortless. But when you do have a hearing loss, you really struggle and listening takes effort. I don't know who's out there who has a spouse who has hearing loss or not, but I could guarantee you that on occasion, if you're with that individual, he or she is missing the conversation and that's stressful for them as well as it is for you. So I wanna try and draw an analogy here. It might be a little bit more difficult doing it in this webinar format, but I wanna draw the analogy to your vision. So when you see a word and the word is spelled out clearly, you recognize it in a second. But if the word is not spelled clearly, it's going to take you maybe a second or two to figure out what that word looks, what, what that word is. And what I'm drawing here in the next two slides is an analogy to what hearing impaired people go through. So if I flip on this next slide, the word toast, pretty simple, pretty easy. It took me like less than a second to figure it out. But now if I show you a word that isn't structured in this same format, it's gonna take you a second or two to figure out that that word is lunch. But it wasn't as fast as it was when you saw the word toast. So if you draw this analogy to a hearing loss, a person might hear a word and they don't hear it clearly because it's not getting processed properly by the brain. So it takes them a second or two to figure out what the word is. By that point, you're past the conversation. You miss the rest of the conversation because you were stuck on listening for one word. So at that point, you become frustrated, you become isolated, you become really annoyed that you're not able to follow the conversation. I always tell people this, that the biggest problem you're gonna have in a restaurant when the waiter gives you the menu or the specials, or when somebody tells a joke and the punchline is a pun or a play on words. People who have hearing loss, even the slightest, is going to miss those two items. So it becomes very frustrating and very isolating. So what happens is your listening effort is increased. Your attention span is broken and your concentration can be destroyed. 
because you're so, so tied into listening to words that it becomes really a stressful scenario. And hence, you isolate, you withdraw. I always tell people I could walk into a room, a crowded room, and I could tell you who the hearing impaired people are because they're either sitting by themselves, sitting in a corner, isolated, or just not partaking in the conversation. So it's really important to understand this linkage between hearing and, and your brain and keeping your brain healthy. And these are processes that are really under control by the listener, not by the talker, by the listener who might be hearing impaired. So what we're trying to do when we make hearing aids and put the hearing aids on people is really reduce the effort involved in listening. Because the more we could reduce that, the less frustrated you're going to be. And the more engaged you're going to be. But when your hearing is compromised, your brain has to work much harder to fill in the gap. As you see this kind of picture here, this gentleman is leaning in. By now, he's lost the conversation. If he has to lean in and hear a word or two, he's lost the conversation. So you could talk from now for another minute or two, and this individual is gone. The brain is working too hard. Any questions yet, Chris? Chris? Oh, sorry about that. Yes, uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, good okay. stuff so far. Yeah. Okay. Okay, keep going. So here's, here are signs of common hearing difficulty. How many times does your spouse say, speak up? You're mumbling. It's harder to follow a conversation. What did that waiter say? Did he say pork chops or lamb chops? And as I mentioned, you tend to limit social activities because you just don't enjoy them any longer. You used to enjoy going into a club to play cards with your friends. The noise is too much. It's too stressful. Uh, I can't relax. I can't play well. I'm, I don't have the confidence. Uh, for years, my father-in-law, who was a, a World War II vet, told my mother-in-law she was mumbling. Well, my mother-in-law did not mumble. My father-in-law had a severe high-frequency hearing loss. I was absolutely, absolutely refused to get a hearing aid. And unfortunately, they kind of lead, led separate, separate lives the last 10, 12 years of their existence because he was so, so adamant that she was the problem, not him. And I can't begin to tell you how many of those conversations I've had with married couples. So today, I think we have a different senior. I am 68 years old. I take a two-mile walk in the morning. I am fortunate to have a pool in my backyard. I swim for about an hour. I am active, and I want to continue to be active. And the fear that most seniors have is that their body is going to outlive their brain. So we need to keep our brain active, and we need to keep information flowing to the brain that's important. The modern senior wants to see themselves active, invested in their time, uh, and take advantage of all activities, social and, and personal. So when we're looking at developing hearing aids or hearing health care, we're really looking at the brain first. We really have to define what the brain needs, what needs to be fed for us to provide the individual with good cognitive function as long as they possibly live and as long as we possibly can. So Oticon developed this technology called brain hearing, where when we define hearing aid technology, we really do think of the brain first. It is something that we think of every time we build a product or a chip. We have to recognize what the brain needs and how we could get that information through the ear to the brain so it allows you to hear as best as you can. So as you see here, this is an active family, kids, dogs around, and there's sound all around. And we want the brain to be able to process all that information and keep the kid close by, keep the other people at a distance. Today, social distancing means a lot more, a lot of different. And oddly enough, this is a very good picture for social distancing. Uh, it's the first time I first time I actually recognize that. Yeah. Uh, 
but it's still important. You know, your brain needs to be active and you need to hear people around you and manage things. So technology has changed really, really dramatically over the past three, four years. Uh, processing computer chips have been much, much more active. So when I started in this business uh, 1979, 41 years ago, uh, hearing aids were nowhere near this sophisticated. But as the years change, the chips and the processes change. But what came out maybe about 20 years ago was what we call directional microphones. And this gives you an idea of a directional microphone. <laughs> Person in the middle of the screen is talking to the gentleman right in front of him. The problem with that, it shut out everything around him for the most part, and that wasn't natural hearing. And that's not how the brain wanted to hear. So Oticon introduced a product three years ago called Open, O-P-N, that now allows us to hear people within our immediate vicinity and be able to focus on those that have speech but still minimize the noise to a great extent. So this was a real breakthrough in technology. And we've since built upon this with some newer, newer technology as well. Uh, so today, we truly do have brain hearing technology because this is how the brain works. The brain is able to decide who I want to speak to, who I want to face, and still minimize some of the noise around us. It's really important to take your personal sound preferences into account. What you need, what you like to hear. It's designed to match your unique personal profile and sound preferences. And that's, again, brain hearing technology at, at its best. The goal, ultimately, you'd understand speech better, listen with less effort so you're not taxed or tired at the end of the day, and certainly have the memory to remember more conversation. So... Alongside the hearing aid, over the last uh, probably seven, eight years, we started having newer technology with the use of Bluetooth technology. So now not only do we want a hearing aid that serves our purpose from a, a, a technical standpoint, a cognitive standpoint, we want to be connected to all those things that we know we could be. So hearing aids of today can directly connect to a TV, can can connect to a phone, can listen to music, can hook up to a computer, have a remote control. So all of these things are things that we as seniors really do look for. And the best devices are those that can stream and can have connectivity ability. So we have a number of opportunities, your iPhone or your Android phone. It is your intermediate, it is your remote control. You can make things louder or softer. You can mute with your phone. <clears throat> your hearing aid can answer <clears throat> a call from your phone. Everything we can do, we can do on the phone with the hearing aid if indeed you don't want to control the controls on the back side of the hearing. That little box at the bottom in the middle, that's a TV device. We watch TV a lot, especially today's day and age. The TV will stream directly to your hearing aid and your spouse could set the volume control totally independent of how you listen to it. I've spoken to many couples that said that this has saved their marriage because one spouse mm -hmm. likes to get in the bed at night and watch TV and one spouse likes to get in the bed and read. So the one who wants to watch TV can mute the TV so the spouse that reads doesn't even hear it and it goes directly to the hearing aid. You have a remote control, you have remote, remote mics, all things to make things much, much easier and much better. If you have an Apple Watch, you know Dick Tracy of years and years ago, he always talked it to his watch. Well, it is a reality. The iPhone watch, the Apple Watch, you'll be able to control things and literally talk into your watch if indeed you want to have a conversation and their voice will go into your hearing aid. This connect clip is a remote mic, uh, so I could talk be 60 feet away from you, and the sound will go directly into your hearing aids, bypassing anybody that's sitting next to you or bypass anybody who's in your area. Uh, and it can control the hearing aid. It's literally a remote control. 
and you see some of the styles of hearing aid. Most popular hearing aids today are these behind the ear hearing aids. Although there are hearing aids much, much smaller that fit deep in your ear canal, they might not be as sophisticated because there's not enough space to put in uh, some of the antennas that need to be put in. Uh, but that becomes your choice and Chris could always run through uh, the different styles based upon your hearing loss. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We talked about the TV adapter, which is really, really important to a lot of people uh, and a lot of homes. Uh, it's, it's something that really does help bring the TV much more clear and much closer to the sound of the individual. And as of the last several years, hearing aid batteries are now rechargeable. So you don't even have to change batteries anymore. These batteries are lithium ion batteries. One three hour charge will give you an 18 to 24 hour day. So when you come home at night, you pop the hearing aids in a charger, which seem to be charging everything these days. Don't have to open and close the battery door to change the battery. The lithium ion batteries last about two to three years. So you will need to change them at that particular point. Uh, but the reality is there's no muss and fuss anymore of opening batteries, shutting it, putting it on, off. Everything is done automatically with this charger. So that's a real powerful unit. And that now is probably about 50 to 60% of our sales. Uh, and we are just literally introducing a lower priced version of this option as well. Previously, they were in the higher priced products. But now, as I uh, explained to Chris a while ago, we just introduced a new product called Ruby, uh, which is a lesser expensive pri price product, but it also now offers the lithium ion rechargeable battery. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And Chris knows about that, so he could talk to you about it. So in conclusion, uh, just to bring you up to date, our goal as a hearing healthcare company is multi, 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 multiple goals. Obviously, we want to provide the best technology available in the industry. We want our technology to be the standard of care in the industry. And in focusing on the brain, because we recognize the brain is the ultimate hearing organ, we need to provide improved speech understanding and, and in the noisiest environments, because that's where it's really the most difficult. Reduce your listening effort. Make sure that it isn't such an effort to hear a regular conversation, because once you miss a couple of words, you're going to miss a good portion of the conversation. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to frustrate your spouse or your children. So we need to make sure we reduce listening effort. And we really need to motivate and empower our patients. And connectivity with all the devices now, with your iPhones, with your TVs, with remote mics, really important for us to continue to participate and engage. And it's funny because of the times that we are living in over the let, excuse me, over the last three months. I worry about the people who do have hearing loss and are living by themselves, or living with a spouse that has a hearing loss and they not not wearing hearing aids that don't have any improvement. It's frustrating enough of a time period that right now uh, our senior population, uh, obviously, as you see the numbers, are much more uh, impacted by this. And the frustration that you could have day in, day out, having not been able to get out, communicate, it really does take its toll in the long run, uh, even in times not like this these situations can uh, be very difficult for, for people who don't take care of their hearing and get their hearing taken care of. So it's really important if you're out there to make sure that you treat your hearing loss like you treat your vision. Uh, Helen Keller, who some of you probably have heard of, uh, she was blinded and she was deaf as a child. And when she was asked as an adult if she could have her hearing back or her vision back, she didn't blink. She 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 didn't blink an eye. I guess that's a pun, but she didn't wait a second. And she said, "No question, she'd want her hearing back because her vision took her away from the beauty of things. Her hearing took her away from the beauty of people and the communication of people." 
So it's really, really important, especially with the studies that we now have and the linkage to cognitive decline, dementia, Alzheimer's, really, really important to get your hearing checked almost on a yearly basis. So by attending this session today, you've certainly taken an important step in the right direction, and we greatly appreciate your participation. However, the next steps for you, uh, Chris will share with you his uh, connect, uh, uh, his phone number, his email address, his website. Schedule an appointment. Do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor, because hearing loss is a family problem. Have your hearing evaluated and see if there are possible treatments. Hearing aids, very simple to wear, very discreet, uh, very, very uh, independent. Uh, it works automatically. You have connectivity uh, benefits, you have phone connectivity benefits. All of these things will help you in your life, in your communication with your family and friends. So with that, I just wanna thank uh, Chris, uh, for the opportunity uh, to talk with you. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. thank uh, Gary for. Uh... Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. So, sorry, you cut it off a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, I just want to thank you uh, for definitely giving us some valuable information and taking the time to educate us of how our how we hear with our brain and our ears and how it relates to other uh, negative effects to the that affect our overall health. Right. And uh, yeah, I just want to let everybody know that we do offer free hearing tests, consultations, and 14-day trials of our hearing aids. You know, Oticon supports us with this. They give us trial aids to lend to the patients so that they're able to get a real life experience when it comes down to actually wearing a hearing aid and see if it's going to benefit you in the long run. Because sometimes, you know, if you have insurance, that's great. Sometimes you have coverage, or if you don't, sometimes it could be a, a pretty good investment. Uh, but it's good to test drive before you make the initial investment. And uh, again, if you guys want a free consultation, test and trial, you can call our office. It's our phone number here is 323-530-0223. And I'll go ahead and post it in the comments. And before we let you go, uh, if you watch this video, we're going to give you a special offer. We're doing $2,000 off any set of brand new hearing aids. Uh, hearing aids can retail depending on the technology from five to seven thousand dollars a set. Uh, of course, we'd have to see how your lifestyle, what what your lifestyle needs, what kind of technology you need for your lifestyle. Uh, the styles, it's not much of a big deal when it comes down to styles, depending on your hearing loss. Uh, but yeah, with the during the console, we'll explain everything. We'll do the test and we'll see what's most beneficial in your case. Anything else would you like to add, uh, Gary, there? <laughs> no. Again, I appreciate the time. Uh, this is always a enjoyable for me, you know, sharing information uh, with your uh, consumers and your patients. It's important for them to understand the linkage and really important for them to understand how important their hearing is in, 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 their, in, in, in their life in general. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Chris, always have. Always a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, hopefully you gained some information and knowledge today. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you, Gary. All right. I'll good night, my friend. Chris, we'll talk, over, we'll talk over the next couple of days. Definitely. Show me those uh, dates yep. and times. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you, my friend. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.